And if you were watching the last time, you will see that we ended on a note that spoke about how our people were dehumanized. But let me review just a little bit before I go on to the next part. One of the things I want to bring back to your remembrance is that our people aren't the only ones who are accustomed to what is real slavery. You have to remember that everybody else in the world, at one time or another, were slaves. Either they were slaves by their own people, or they enslaved other people, or were enslaved by other people. The ancient Babylonians had a system of slavery. The ancient Persians had a system of slavery. The ancient Egyptians had a system of slave of slavery, or better known as Kemetites. The Hebrews had a system of slavery. The Vikings took people as slaves. Scandinavian countries had slaves and were taken as slaves amongst their own people. Internationally, slavery as an institution is ancient. When people say the word slave, they should not automatically think of people that look like you and I. Yes, we took each other as slaves also. Now, let's review quickly how a person became a slave. Because by law, by the international rules, by the goings on in antiquity, there were reasons people became slaves. And it had nothing to do with the color of their skin. Nothing to do with it. One, you had to be in a war and have lost that war. Many times the victor would take people as slaves. Rome did it a lot. Everybody Rome conquered, they took those people as slaves. Debt. If you were in debt to someone, to order to work off your debt, you would become their slave. Now, if that was translated to modern times, there's a lot of people who would be slaves because of credit card debt, mortgage debt, and so on. Poverty. Many times people voluntarily would bring their families into someone else who had more and voluntarily became their slave. Why? So they could eat, they could have a roof over their head, so they don't have to worry about where they would sleep. In other words, just to survive. Then the fourth reason is crime. If you committed a heinous crime in ancient times, many times to work off your debt to society, you would become a slave of the state. Or somebody else's slave who was in government, you'd work it off because of your crime that you committed was so heinous, you became a slave. Now those are the four main reasons why people became slaves. Now I'm proving my point. That we, as far as America is concerned, were never slaves. Let me add one more thing. Law. There were international laws that governed slavery as an institution. There were certain things you couldn't do to a slave. You, 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 you might treat the slave badly. You, they didn't have the same social status as everyone else. But that, did, but that didn't mean they weren't treated like human beings. Many times, the slave laws in antiquity were very, very careful to point out that even if you took an adult as a slave, you had no right to their children. Their children didn't become your slave because the parents were. That was international law. Now let me prove my point. We were never slaves in America. One, look at the reasons that people were brought into slavery. Crime. What crime did Africans or Kushites commit against Europe that we would have to become their slave? Poverty. What kind of poverty were we in that we would have to voluntarily become the slave of Europeans just so we could survive? D. 
debt. What debt do we owe Europeans that we would have to become their slaves? And war. What war was Kush in against the Europeans that we would lose this war and have to become their slaves? There was no war, no debt, no poverty, no crime. So just based on that, then what happened to us here? What happened to us here? Everybody keeps saying we were slaves. Oh, we were taken to slave. We were on the plantation, treated so badly. No. Let me tell you something. Just because something looks like something doesn't mean, upon close examination, it's what you think it is. It's like dressing up a man with a wig and a dress on or some high heels. Maybe from a distance, you might think it's a woman. But upon close examination, you'll find that it's not a woman, but a man. Just because they have similarities, like two eyes, two ears, two legs, two arms, maybe from a distance, you might think it's a woman. But upon close examination, in spite of the similarities, you'll find out it's not a woman, but it's a man. It's the same thing with this. If you closely examine what slavery really is and what we went through and are going through, you will find and have to agree it was not slavery. We were dehumanized. Now I know that doesn't flow off the tongue like the word slavery, because dehumanized is a bigger word, but this is the fact. This is the truth that we're talking about here. If we were slaves, Obama wouldn't be the first one running to be president of the United States and get this close. For those of you that read your Bible, you can read that Joseph who was a slave and wound up being number two in the country. And there was no stigma placed on Joseph having been a slave because being a slave was no shame. There was no shame involved in that. You weren't less than a human being because you had been a slave. It happened to people around the world. But we were not slaves. We were dehumanized. When you take a people away from their land and you take their name, you take their culture, you take their land away from them, you're dehumanizing them. And then when you make it look like or seem like they are no more than an animal or less than an animal, you have dehumanized them. You have dehumanized them when you can, even up to today, shoot a man 40 times unarmed and nobody goes to jail. But those of you in New York that follow the news know there's a court case where a man's about to do two years because he abused his cat. And he will do time. Then I ask you, right in your face, how many people have gone to Rikers Island, how many policemen have gone to Rikers Island for killing Amadou Diallo? Or the more recent shooting? Well, let's go all the way back to years ago, count all the ones, how many policemen went to Rikers Island? And I'm not talking about a civil suit. See, because murder is a crime punishable in a place like Rikers Island. That's not a civil suit. Murder is a crime. That's not for a civil suit. But you or me, not looked at as a human being, don't deserve for someone to go to jail for killing you. It's all right. It's okay. Every time you have the police department, did they follow guidelines? They'll say, yes, they follow guidelines. They broke a rule here and there, but it's not a big deal. That's because you're looked at as less than human. But let's, let's bring it more up into more modern times. You will see many of our people with blonde hair, a cushion, dark-skinned human being with blonde hair. Now, first of all, genetically, that just don't work. Even when, when Caucasians and Kushites have children together, you've never, ever seen
seeing that. The hair might be black, blonde, no. But what would possess an African or Kushite to blonde their hair? It's like this. Carter G. Woodson said, if you can determine what a man will think, you don't have to worry about what he will do. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 23 and 7, it says, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if I dehumanize you, in other words, if I take the humanity out of you and make you think that you're not a human being, I can put anything in there to make you feel human, make you think this is what being a human is. Anything. First, I, first thing I do, I take your name from you. You don't have a name. You don't have a country. You don't have a history. Why? You're not human. So what do I do? I start to call you black. I call you black. Now, have you ever looked up the word black? Let me give you some of the meanings of the word black. Swarthy. Dirty or soiled. Black. Reflecting or transmitting little or no light. Black. Thoroughly sinister or evil. Black. Wicked, vile, roguish, fierce, vicious. Black, indicative of condemnation and fault. Black, connected with the demonic. Black, very sad, gloomy, or callous. Black, marked by the occurrence of disaster. Black, sullen dull or somber in sound or color. Black, characterized by grim, distorted, or grotesque stature. And you've heard these other things that go wrong with black. Black leg, a cheating gambler or swindler. Black lung, black rot which is a bacteria or fungus, rot on a plant. Black heart, black list, black mail, black market, black death, black magic, black Friday, black ball, blackened reputation. They even have a phrase called <clears throat> Black Irish. There's the black sheep of the family. There's a black mark you'll get at school for being late. There's a thing called a black Maria, which is called a paddy wagon. There's a thing called Black Ham, which is a secret society of the late 19th and 20th century of a lawless society engaged in criminal activities like terrorists. Then there's the black beast, and of course, those of you who are Catholic know about black mass, which is a travesty of the Christian mass ascribed to worshipers of Satan. And then under that, imagine calling yourself, knowing all of that, black people. I understand some words have power, but we'll get into that another time. And see, here's the thing that they did to us. They call us black and allowed us to call them white. Now let's go real quickly over what, when you call them white, what you're saying. White. Of, relating to, or characteristic of, consisting of white people or their culture. White. Marked by uprightness and fairness. White. Free from spot or wrinkle or blemish. White. Free from moral impurity. White. Innocent. White. Not intended to cause harm. Now I ask you. You may know some people that you call white. But are they that? Are all of them that? In every group of people, regardless of skin color, you have good, bad, and not so good or bad. In every group. Not a matter of skin color, this is a human condition. 
but by no means are all of us black. First of all, your skin color doesn't tell you that you're black. My suit jacket is black. I haven't met too many people this color. Not in Bed-Stuy, not in Harlem, not in Atlanta, not in Savannah, Georgia, not in Jamaica. You know, they talk about Nigerians being blue-black. Yeah, but this is black-black. Okay, and another thing, you look on the globe, you look on the map, you won't find black land. No such place as black land. But even being called black as a concept is a negative to yourself. And since we know that words have power, what are you doing to yourself when you call yourself black? You're calling yourself evil and wicked. But you can do that with the people who don't see themselves as human. One of the things Malcolm said was this. The greatest damage done to us isn't that we were taken as slaves, word that he used, but that we were taught to hate ourselves. When you're taught to hate yourself, you will do what many of us do to each other now. We'll kill each other before we kill someone else. Not that we should kill anybody, but we kill ourselves on the street like we're at war with each other, and of course you could be at war with something that you don't even see as human. Because anything walking around with two legs and two arms that's not human is a monster. Anything black is evil anyway and should be killed. The, 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 you, wouldn't, you wouldn't respect the life of something that's evil. You wouldn't respect the life of something that's inhuman. What life could someone or something have that's not even human have that you would respect? None. So it's easy to kill. It's easy to kill. We do it to each other all the time. Sometimes for no reason at all. Just kill. This is the way the street's supposed to be. Just living on the street. I'm keeping it real. Killing each other. Why? Because you're black. Then let's talk about the other word that no one likes to talk about. The word nigger. Let me, honestly, let me, let me tell you something. First of all, we're not niggers. We're not niggers. And the only thing lower than the savage is a nigger. If you know what a savage is, and you, if you understood your, your humanity, you would never call yourself a nigger. Only people who don't see themselves as human would submit to call themselves a nigger. And isn't it strange that after the 50s and 60s and some parts of the 70s, while our people died and bled to eradicate that word from us, now many of us are defending it using it and wearing it like it's some kind of loving word or something. But that's because you don't really see yourself as a human being. And don't say you see yourself human just because you can uh, wear a new pair of sneakers and ride a nice car, get a, 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 a car with a nice boom box in it or whatever. No. You know how you know when you're human? <clears throat> you see yourself as a human being? When you respect your life. When you respect your life. When you respect the life of others who look like you, even if you don't know them, that's how you know. That's how you know. But the minute you think everybody's life is trash and that your own life is trash, you don't really see yourself as a human being. No, you don't. No, you don't. If you're willing to drug all the time and walk away from your children and things of that nature, then you don't see yourself as being a human being. And more evidence of being dehumanized when the family is split up. When we were on the plantation, you couldn't keep your family together. It was against the plantation law. Part of being human is keeping your family together. Family is the backbone of any community, of any nation. If you can't keep family together, community goes away. Therefore, a nation is disintegrated. You see, because a real slave always knew where their family were. A real slave always knew where they came from. A real slave always knew their history. A real slave, after they paid their debt to society and worked off their slavery, could go back home. You can't do that. You can't do that. Just like the fragmentation that's going on in Africa or Kush, with all these uh, fake borders that are there, borders that we didn't put there, borders that the colonizers put there. It's a fragmentation. So you'll find 
even in Kush, even in Africa, where we're fighting against each other because of the fragmentation. We'll do it here. We'll use Willie Lynch philosophy here against each other because we don't see each other as human beings. But I guarantee you, when the vast majority of us start seeing each other and ourselves as human beings and valuing our lives, a lot of things will stop. You won't even need the police to patrol your community. You won't have to worry about fathers walking away from their children. You won't have to worry about it. You won't have to worry about demanding education for your children. You won't have to worry about building your own businesses and controlling your own economics. Because as a human being, that's what you do. That's what you do. But when you don't see yourself as human, those things don't matter. How many of us walk around without health care? Not because you just can't get it. Some of us had the money and wouldn't get it anyway. I was reading the paper where several artists who I won't name about to auction off their jewelry. One has uh, 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 had, a, had a, a pendant with diamonds so much and so big on it, it's in the Guinness Book of World Record. And, and them entertainers look like us. Now imagine how much that costs if it's real gold and it's a real diamond. You mean to tell me you can, you can take your money and do that? But it's all right to see your own folks starving on the street, see your own children that look like you, that can't get a good education, and you can take the money and make a pendant into it and wear it around your neck? I mean, it's all kinds of jewelry. Um, gold brush and diamond brush Gucci watches. Cost a lot of money, right? And you figure, all. Oh, it's their money they made, they can do what they want with it. And that's true, it's their money, they can do what they want with it, that's right. But, what are you thinking? See what I'm saying? What are you thinking? See, because the minute you start to value life, then you will figure, okay, I have me a nice pair of shoes, then let me help somebody else out. Somebody who I know isn't doing well. We talk about all this starving over and over, it's going on over in Africa, over in Kush. Do you know that if we put our monies together, there wouldn't be any starvation over there? Do you know that? Do you know there'd be no starvation right here if we valued the life of each other? But having been dehumanized, we don't think so. Having been dehumanized, we don't really care. How else have we been dehumanized? Look at the social order. You live in a community where a politician who looks like you says they're going to bring jobs into the community. So what do they do? They bring in a place like Target. They tell you to bring in a nice Target. There's going to be jobs for you there. It sounds good, but now up in Harlem, and I noticed because I've been in Harlem, a lot of the people there were trying to have their own businesses, making their own products, and they were swept off the street. But if your life was valued as a human being, and if you saw yourself as a human being as you should, you would have demanded that if these people with, these, with this money when they come in here and build businesses, let them build our businesses. See, because what happens is they'll build a Target, and we'll take our money and go buy in Target, make Target $100 million that they'll take out of our community, give us jobs, but the managers are making, oh, maybe thirty, thirty-five thousand a year. Well, we're giving them a hundred million or more a year. Wherein if they have built our businesses up and have to have to come in and let us buy our products made by our people, that hundred million dollars will circulate in our community. Instead of it just going out. So you have to be able to think like that. But yes, how human beings think. Because I'm telling you, we should have total control of everything that goes on in our community. Total control of everything. You you go into Chinatown, I guarantee you they have total control. Little Italy, total control. The Russian community over there, over there by um, Canarsie, not Canarsie, over by, anyway, it's over there. <laughs> but they have total control. Coney Island, that's what I'm talking about. And other communities where, where there's a group of them who understand where they come from, understand where they are, where, where they are, and understand their own humanity, they control everything that happens in their community. You go over to Eastern Park where the Hasidic community even has a patrol of their own. 
They handle the security of their own community. And NYPD doesn't do or say anything. And they don't ask NYPD for permission because they see their own humanity. But when we begin to see our own humanity and understand that we are human beings like any other human being, that we'll do the same thing. It won't be a hard push to do it. Let me give you a little history of ancient Kush, ancient Africa, in regards to how we treated our women. And I'm leading, I'm going somewhere with this. In ancient Kush, you could have women that were heads of state and generals of the army because you didn't see your woman as just a sex object or something or someone who was secondary to you. You see, in the 1920s, in this country, women were given the right to vote, 1920s. That's because they were regulated as less than, because they were women. But that's a European mindset, where the woman, because she's physically weaker in most cases, could be oppressed by the male, because in most cases, he's stronger than she. But in ancient Kush, before the European came along, you never thought like that about your woman. You never did. You would never abuse your woman. You would never do that. You would never think that you were smarter than her just because of her gender. You would never think to oppress her because she was part of you. She was part of what made your community, made your nation strong. You would never oppress her. You never call her out of her name. But when you get the European mindset, the female gets regulated to only a few things. She becomes a sex object and an object of abuse and scorn because she's seen as less than human. And if you see yourself less than human, when you come across someone else that's physically weaker than you, you're going to abuse them. You're going to put them to the side. You're not going to take care of them as they should be. You're not going to see them as they should be seen. But that's part of dehumanization because understand something, that even though Kushite men are oppressed. Kushite women are oppressed too. Caucasians, whoever the powers that are, that oppress us, oppress both of us, not based on gender, but will oppress you more because you're more of a threat to him than the other guy. We were never slaves in America. It's just like the indigenous people of this land were not slaves. They got wiped out. They just couldn't wipe us out. We're too strong, too bad. We still here. But they began to, they didn't wait till they got here to begin to dehumanize us. They started over there. And everything connected with you being black was put down. Everything. This is the last in this series. There's going to be more stuff that I'm coming with. But this is the last in this series. Tune in some more. Continue to read. Build yourself up. See you next time. Kushite, keep your, keep your boots on tight.